Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. My name is Kevin Haskins, Application Engineer with Capture 3D. I'd like to take a little bit of time today to talk with you about the iInspect function within the ATOS software. If you're new here and you like my video, please don't forget to click subscribe down below so you don't miss out on more 3D technology tips and tricks delivered by the Capture 3D team. So a lot of you are probably wondering what is the iInspect function, what does it do, or what applications might I have to use it for? So the iInspect function, or the iInspect wheel as I call it, um, is a function where you can access inspection options for any element that you have selected within your project. Um, so regardless of what scanner or what measuring volume you use to scan your part, you'll likely be using the iInspect function to inspect those parts. Um, to open the iInspect wheel, all you have to do is left mouse click on the magnifying glass icon within the inspection workspace, or from within the, any workspace, you can use the hotkey, control right mouse click in the 3D view. So before we get started um, with the software portion of this video, I'd just like to take a quick moment to touch on some of the big benefits of the iInspect wheel. Um, so iInspect can help you manage inspection functions guide you through the inspection process by only offering necessary and relevant inspections and checks, um, automatically identifies the elements that you have selected, whether they be actual or nominal. Um, and then also it's good to note that the iInspect wheel can be displayed as two different menus, depending on which skin you're working on in your project, whether it's the inspection skin or the deformation skin. Um, if you're not familiar with skins, don't worry, that's covered in another one of our technical videos. Just don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned earlier, you can open up the eye inspect wheel by clicking on the magnifying glass icon here in the inspection workspace. You can also control right mouse click anywhere in the 3D view will open your iInspect wheel to that location. When you, uh, you'll notice that when the iInspect wheel is opened, it's essentially a pie wheel with five pieces and then a center edit icon. Um, we're gonna talk about each one of these icons individually and their functions and why we would use them. Um, the first one, this T symbol, is gonna be our measuring principles. Now, <clears throat> the measuring principles will vary depending on what type of element you have selected, because remember, our iInspect wheel will only generate relevant elements to whatever we have selected. Um, and a measuring principle in the ATO software is basically our way of telling the software how to create a corresponding actual element based off of the created and selected nominal element. Um, so for this surface point, um, we're going to create an intersection with mesh. And what an intersection with mesh is, basically we're looking at the vector of the surface point, the nominal surface point that we've created, um, and we are going in either direction until it intersects with the mesh, and that is where we will place the actual surface point. Uh, moving around the I inspect wheel, this next button here is going to be for our checks. So depending on what type of element we have selected, will determine the type of checks that we can do to that element. Um, so we'll say for this surface point, we can select this deviation to normal. And if we wanna just look at the variety here, we have this cylinder one, um, we can do different checks. So we can say, let's check the radius of this cylinder one. This next icon here is for GD and T inspections. Um, so again, depending on the type of element that you have selected, will determine the list that appears. So for our cylinder, let's go ahead and just check our roundness of the cylinder. Um, and then for the surface point, we'll notice it is a much shorter list. Uh, we'll go ahead and just check the true position. I'll fill out the dialog and click OK. OK, and this next icon here is uh, solely for airfoil inspections. To utilize the airfoil inspection on the iInspect wheel, uh, we first need to have a section cut through our airfoil. Um, so you can see I've already done that. 
I'm going to go ahead and select it and left, uh, hit E on my keyboard to make that section exclusive. And then with that section selected, I can come over here to this airfoil icon, left mouse click, and then I can apply any of these checks. Um, so let's say you don't work in the airfoil or aerospace industry and you never intend to use the airfoil icon. Uh, you have the option to customize your eye inspect wheel by coming up to inspection, configure eye inspect, and then, oops, excuse me, and just left mouse clicking on the airfoil button. And that will make that icon go away. This icon that looks like the silhouette of a person holding a frisbee is the user defined inspection principles, uh, also known as the UDIP. Now, the, the UDIP is an easy way to group and save repeating element inspections um, and essentially create a standard procedure for a certain type of element. Um, so for this example, I have created all of these cones on this gone block and I want to check them for their angle and their straightness. Uh, instead of going one by one and doing all the cones, I can select all of these cones. Let's deselect these. Um, and then clicking on the UDIP button, I can select this cones, which is just a UDIP that I have previously created. Um, and left mouse clicking that, you'll notice that instantly all of those inspections are automatically done for me and labels generated. Now, lastly, the center icon is the edit button. Um, this allows you to get an element frontal view. Um, it'll also let you recalculate an element. Um, you can edit the creation parameters or there are several visualization options that you can choose from. Say I only want to display the name currently. If I select that, now just the name of my selected element will appear. Okay, so we started with a nominal element within the software and then we used the functions of the eye inspect wheel to generate an actual element by applying a measuring principle and then continued to apply checks and GD&T inspections to that element. We then took a look at basic airfoil inspection by starting with a single section and using the airfoil icon on the eye inspect wheel to inspect that section. We then continued to apply inspections to multiple elements at the same time through the use of a UDIP. I hope this video was helpful. Um, don't forget to click subscribe down below so you don't miss out on more 3D technology tips and tricks videos or visit our website for case studies or to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with the Capture 3D team. Until next time, bye.